Good morning, everybody. Good morning, it is Thursday. We're back in Sedgemoor. My name is Lauren. I'm the team lead for agents in the Sedgemoor area. How are you? Are you okay? If you could let me know if you can hear and see me okay before I start talking, that would be fantastic. It's a bit of a wet and miserable Thursday today. It um, started pouring down here probably about half an hour ago. It's quite wet and grey, so apologies if the lighting's not brilliant. We'll just wait to make sure that you can see and hear me okay. I don't think anybody's joined the live feed yet. So we'll just keep waiting, keep waffling on. This is always the worst bit of doing a live, is waiting for people to join you and waiting to know that it's all okay. Fingers crossed you can see, oh, there's two people watching, so hopefully, morning, Kat, how are you, okay? Is it wet in Taunton? It's really grey and miserable here today, which is not so nice. So as I said, we are back in Sedgemoor this morning. My name is Lauren. I'm the team lead for the agents in Sedgemoor. And today I'm going to be doing a, a meet the agents session to introduce you to some of our agents in Sedgemoor. We have a big team in Sedgemoor. We have 12, including myself and Amory, who is the deputy team lead in Sedgemoor. Um, so we're a big team and we also have two new recruits joining us in September. So we're really excited to get them on board. And that will make a team of 14 in Sedgemoor. It's well needed. We're a busy, busy area. We have you know, a high number of referrals. So a big team is needed. So I'm going to introduce you to, um, I've managed to rope three of my agents in to speaking with us this morning. They've been very brave. I know they're very nervous. Um, so we'll have a chat with them and they can introduce themselves and tell us all about themselves and the role. And then I've got some printed versions of some of my team have sent me that I can um, let you know who they are. So first up, we are going to go to Jo. I'm gonna add Jo into the live feed now and she can tell us about her role. So here she is, here's Jo now. Can you hear us okay, Jo? I can hear you fine, yeah. Fab. So Jo, tell us a little bit about you and the role that you do in Sedgemoor. Oh yeah, right. So um, my role was due to change on the 31st of March um, from village agent mental health to community agent uh, with learning disabilities, um, which is gradually um, coming into the fore. So that means I get my referrals from uh, peer forum meetings, which is uh, sort of meetings with social workers, etc. cetera. Um, so that if any of their clients with learning disabilities have some community or social needs, uh, that we would look at that. Um, obviously, at the moment, the community needs uh, is a little bit tricky because there aren't groups and things running. So it's just been a case of keeping in touch with them and obviously letting people know when things reopen again. So I'm keeping my eye on that. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot opening at the moment. Um, so in the meantime, um, I've been working in my sort of local community with the vicar and health centre etc um sort of helping out there as most of us have been doing so we've set up a little community food bank sort of thing so that myself and the vicar and the other local churches can use that if they know of any families who are in need mm -hmm. and also that means we're not such a, a draw on the normal food bank which obviously has been quite busy over this period um yeah. we also did things like delivered um all the over 90s of the day tea on the day yeah um, and obviously we've been helping out with the food drops and things like that um as well and they've been coming out here as well so yeah we've been doing all sorts of things like that um yeah, yeah. been busy haven't you joe <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Very busy. So you mentioned um, obviously you're part of our community agent team here in Sedgemoor and you get your referrals directly from adult social care. Um, you have quite a background, don't you, in working with people with learning disabilities. So that's why you are perfect for this role. Uh, yeah. Great understanding of, of people with some perhaps extra needs. So yeah. Think of yeah. 
you know, when we're able to return to visits and groups start back up and things like that, you'll be kind of supporting people to integrate into their communities and Absolutely. live a really full life. So Absolutely. that's a really exciting role. And I think really uh, another bit of the role may be moving forward due to I just, it, you don't know what's going to reopen again. So it might be identifying what has disappeared over COVID and maybe trying yes. to restart things that, you know, so it's 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 a funny time. So you know, obviously, it's, a, it's going to be ever evolving. So yeah. yeah, but you have you kept in phone contact with a lot of your clients with LD Absolutely. families yeah. just to make sure that. Um, and it's been interesting, actually, hasn't it, Joe? That a lot of your clients actually haven't wanted to go out. They've wanted to stay at home and stay safe. They've actually had a really good understanding of what what it's meant to be shielding. Yeah. And, and they they're you know possibly going to need some extra support to reverse some of that thinking and and get back out into the community so I think um you've had a busy year so far but I think we're going to be even busier for yes. you to get the I don't see it getting quiet back. anytime soon <laughs> <No>. <laughs> definitely not is there anything else you want to tell us Joe? before I let you um no, I think I feel like one of my um, other colleagues have a pop now, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much for being brave enough to come and talk to us. <laughs> no problem. Bye. Bye. There we go. So I've removed Joe back out of the stream and um, I'll introduce one of my other colleagues. So we're moving over to a couple of colleagues in uh, the North Sedgemore area. So um, Steve Ballinger, I'm going to bring into the stream to introduce us to himself and his role. Hi. Hi, Lauren. You okay? Hi, everyone. You're working fine, okay? You can you. hear us? Yeah, I'm fine. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. So if you just Good. let us know, Steve, sort of about your role, really. Um, I'm a village agent. Uh, I uh, primarily, I'm funded by part of the NHS, the Somerset Clinical Commissioning Group, and also Highbridge Medical Centre. I work very closely with my two local surgeries, so I take referrals from GPs and other practice staff. Highbridge Medical Centre and from Bur the Burnham patients from Burnham and Barrow Medical Centre. Um, always busy. How long have you been doing the role, Steve? I've been doing the role for just over five years. Um, so you're one of our, I think you are our longest standing. No, 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 Kim. No, Kim, Kim, is, Kim, Kim is started, even longer. Yeah, Kim, Kim, who's coming up soon, I understand it is. Yes, gone next. Me. And uh, I, I, I've been blessed to have her around uh, with her help yeah. and guidance over the years. So, um, but I think one of the interesting things is that um, the, the role we do, we work very closely with our local GPs. And um, at the beginning of last year, um, the which seems like a lifetime away, the mm. um, the NHS published its long term plan and, and talked about um, recruiting an army of a, a thousand um, what they call prescribing link workers to work with GPs across the country and um, so that process is underway and we've we've got some some of those people working with us as well but in in Somerset and in North Sedgemore we've been doing it for five years so we've been yeah. we've been well ahead of the game definitely yeah. and you've got a really established fantastic relationship with particularly Highbridge Medical Centre haven't you they really uh, see you as one of them yeah, with both, but particularly with, with Highbridge, um, uh, the funding they provide allows me to be there one day a week and um, Highbridge patients can book in to see me uh, in the same way as they would uh, a doctor, a nurse or, or, or anyone else at the, um, at the practice. And in a way, it's, um, it's an extra tool in the armoury of surgeries where... Uh, and it recognises the fact that AGPs and everyone else there is 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 overstretched, but yeah. also the fact that um, uh, sometimes people go and sit down with GPs uh, with quite complex issues around debt, benefits, housing, and um, whilst GPs may have a role because there may be a knock-on effect with things like mental health, um, sometimes uh, those kind of issues take a lot of unpicking, and, and a GP isn't the best person to do that. Yeah. So That's then they would book them in with an appointment with you, wouldn't they, on a Wednesday? You would come in yeah. and see you um, and to start yeah. unpicking and some of that's really long term work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I should say I'm not doing that at the moment because we're still working yes. from home. 
Um, but uh, looking forward to some degree of normality at some stage. Definitely. So you've seen some really big changes within the organisation within six years, but this is probably the biggest one you've had, I imagine, Steve, the, the transition to working completely from home. Um, uh, absolutely. I, I think, I think um, when I started, there were uh, a small number of agents, probably about a dozen, typically working eight or nine hours a week, um, doing some great work, but I mean, now we've got a lot more people who are full time or, or nearly full time as I am. Um, uh, we cover, I think I'm right in saying the whole of the county. Um, uh, well, I've, I've lost count of how many people we've got, but it must be 70 or 80. I think and, it's over 50, but we've got another maybe right. 12 coming on board soon. So Yeah, and, and, and uh, around the county, we do a lot of a lot of brilliant work. And, and um, I, I, I sometimes think, well, if we weren't there, how many things would fall between the cracks definitely uh, but partly because i think uh, i mean one of the big areas i've done a lot of work on the last couple of years one of the real growth areas we've I mean, been uh supporting people with benefits issues because the benefits system is complicated and yeah. uh difficult to work your way around and i think a lot of a lot of systems have become more complex and um so it, it just helps to have someone who kind of knows the way around it a little bit i think yeah absolutely i think that's a perfect example of some of the work that we do is just helping people navigate systems that are absolutely yeah. blowing to people that don't know and, and it might be that we're not the best person to do the hands-on stuff in which case we sign both to someone who is because of, we normally yes. know who is whereas yes. um you know an awful lot of people out there uh, i mean there's a benefit called attendance allowance that um people of pensionable age can claim with if they've got certain medical conditions but the number of times i've had a conversation with someone who's clearly eligible for attendance allowance but doesn't know it exists yeah um and so if you don't know something exists it's going to be quite difficult to claim it, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely and then the minefield of actually claiming it can be incredibly difficult for a lot of yeah, people absolutely. So. And, and and stressful yes very much so absolutely lovely well thank you very much steve for being brave enough to come and join us this morning My it's pleasure. Been... thank you for having me no it's been Welcome brilliant on. i will um remove you off the stream and add in kim so thank you very much right. steve thank you take care bye bye, bye, -bye. so that was steve ballinger i've just introduced you to in the uh, north sedgemore area um morning mandy fisher and morning hannah and morning Julie who have said hello in the comments um, since we've been chatting. If there are any other questions that you want to ask the team in Sedgemore, then please do pop them in the comments section and I will um, ask our agents for you. So I'm going to add Kim into our stream now. Morning Kim. Good morning Lauren. Morning you everybody. You okay? Can you hear okay? Thank you. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Kim Wilcox, village agent in North Sedgemore. And as um, Steve mentioned, I have been doing the role nearly six and a half years now. So when I did start, there was just 10 of us um, in the role, um, which has increased massively. Um, and when I started, I, it was literally just covering the villages within my area, which are the villages surrounding Burnham and Highbridge. So Breen and Barrow, Limpsham, East Brent, Brent Knoll, a bit of Burnham without, which sounds very strange, but not quite yes. in Burnham on Sea, but Burnham without. Okay. And then yeah, a little bit yeah. down the A38 towards sort of Rooksbridge and Compton Bishop and those areas. Um, and a year or so into my role, I um, went into the GP surgery locally here and had a chat with them. And, you know, sort of that process of working with... Um, uh, all the GPs within the North Sedgemore area sort of um, started from from that time onwards. And I take my referrals from Brent Area Medical Centre and uh, Barrow, which is part of Burnham and Barrow. Um, so myself and Steve sort of have those, that joint surgery, but sort of split those uh, patients that we see. Um, so generally, yeah, we'd get our, I'd get my referrals from those um, surgeries. That could be either sort of attending um, at, before COVID, it was attending a monthly multidisciplinary team meeting or they would just call and send us a referral. Obviously, anyone can self-refer as well. Yeah. Um, and ordinarily, we would have been visiting those people in their homes, which is really beneficial, um, seeing people in their homes and just having a real good feel for um, any issues that are, are troubling them. And, yeah. and it can vary from um, any issue 
with uh, benefits or help within the home. Um, mm. I think what's the, the best part of being a village agent um, is really being able to make a difference to people's lives. And sometimes it's a really small thing, but it's huge for them. And over those years, I've managed to build up some really good relationships with other organisations and um, professionals within the area that we can sort of then link in with to support these people that we visit. Um, I mean, this week I've worked so closely with so many micro providers that are helping my uh, clients um, in the area. Some have just come in out of hospital being discharged or just changing circumstances. Um, so it's just linking them in with people that can help them within the home. Um, yeah. And as I say, that has built up over the time. Um, and it's great that we have those links in as well. Um, you mentioned hospital discharges there. You also have um, a, another dish, slight addition to your role, don't yeah. you? You attend Burnham Community Hospital. Um, yes. So that's a weekly patient discharge forum. Um, and that would be, yeah, every Wednesday in Burnham Hospital, just discussing the patients that are in the hospital um, and when they're ready for discharge, that when they do go home, they have the right care um, in place or actually they might want to, now they're feeling better, go back out into the community and talk to them about what groups and organisations are happening locally. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's been really useful because I think sometimes they've been in hospital and had that um, companionship with other people and the staff there. And then they may go yes. home to just them on, the, you know, yeah. in their own yeah. in their, their own house. So it's sort of keeping that communication going with other Definitely. people as it's, well. It's looking at those social barriers, isn't it, that's um, preventing that discharge. It's looking at what are the reasons why this person hasn't gone home yet? Is there something in the house that isn't quite right? Doesn't Yeah. Mean um, quite often we get requests for beds to be moved downstairs or mm. banks are empty and things like that, isn't it? So it's it's providing that social kind of aspect to problem yeah, solving. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah. Charging people. Yeah. And, you know, one of the... Um, one of the other areas and or the couple of villages are working in uh, Breen and Barrow um, and also within sort of um, Limpsham and East Brent and Brent Knoll. The churches I work very closely with um, and the vicars there trained up a few years ago, lay pastoral assistants. Um, and they've been invaluable to me when I see clients because there's in each um, each of those villages, they've got about 10 um, volunteers that are happy to go and visit people maybe every couple of weeks or you know face to face or a phone yeah. call and it's just breaking that um, isolation down um, and I know some of that has still continued because um, they've managed to do that in the gardens and things like that and I've yeah. I, I've been even been able to make a referral this week um, with that it's going to happen that meet's going to happen within a garden um, yeah. because at the moment you know everyone is struggling sort of if they are on their own and isolation and um and we will put in you know a talk support service and things like that over the phone but having that human contact is really important yeah. um so that's been really great to that I have that link in with my lay partial assistants in the villages um Fantastic. and they make that contact and they're going to visit someone um yeah. Yeah, probably every couple of weeks and have a chat That's with them very... and get to know them. And I know some of those friendships have really built up over that time yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And also with Bera and Breen, I'm working with the um, parish council and the churches there and just looking at a long term um, sort of solution for some support groups, um, especially Breen. I mean, during the winter months, it's a very small yeah. um cohort of residents there's about 800 people and I don't think the village halls and the churches are, are utilized to their extent and it's looking at how we can um, sort of bring something you know up and running hopefully soon yeah. within those those areas that people can go to that that live there as well yeah so yeah um, lots of great work going on in North Sedgemore <laughs> thank you well, thank you very much Kim for joining us this morning being brave no problem. and come and have a chat um, Steve is signalling something. Is he signalling to me? <laughs> I'll add you back in, Steve, so you can tell us what you want to say. Oh, yeah, just briefly. He's keen now. Uh, oh, morning. Morning. We've got three of us now. <laughs> no, I was, I was just, I was just going to say, um, we we talked about Kim and I um, 
uh, and I know you're going to talk about the other agents as well, but uh, we we also work very closely with um, Kirsten Rushby, our colleague who who, um, who works on the same what was a pilot project in in North Sedgemoor, covering um, Axbridge and Wedmore Medical Centre and Cheddar Medical Centre, and I think we're I personally I feel particularly lucky to have such experienced colleagues around around me uh, and are very supportive, and I think um, we. we to take part in we take part in regular meetings with various people from different parts of the NHS and um, uh, there was a time when we used to clap for the NHS every Thursday night and, and I just um, think it's worth recognising that I, I, I think the professionalism and, and dedication of everyone that I, I've worked with the, with the NHS has been has been truly humbling. Yeah. You, you, we see the pressures they're under and oh, huge. Uh, yeah nice to be able to just take some of that load for them isn't it to um to support them in the work they're doing and yeah yeah Lovely. and it's nice that we are part of their team as you say Steve yeah. We're on, yeah you know we're on regular calls with them and we are just classed as sort of a, a one team with them which is definitely um which is a massive step forward from years ago uh, it is so. and actually it provides much better outcomes for the people that we are supporting mm. Because they and have quite, that multidisciplinary approach. Yeah, and quick resolutions as well, yeah. which is really good. Definitely. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you very much, Kim and Steve, for joining me. You're I'm welcome. going to talk about Kirsten. Thank you, too. In North Sedgemoor area. So thank you both very much. It's lovely to thank chat. You. Okay, bye. So as I said, I am going to move on and, and just finish talking about North Sedgemoor area. But before I do... Um, Oh, Joe's just mentioned that the banner is wrong. That was, um, don't know if I can change it. Bear with me. Let me have a quick look. Oh, yeah, I can. A one, eight, two, three. Fingers crossed that banner should come up with our correct telephone number now. Zero one, eight, two, three, 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 one, two, two, two. Perfect. Thanks for that, Joe. So I'm just going to answer a question that has come in from um, Chantal before I move on to introducing you to our other agents. Um, Chantal has asked about some of the water bottles, which is a new scheme that we have launched today um, about combating dehydration, making sure that everybody's drinking plenty in the summer months. And we have our very own CCS branded water bottles with a straw to encourage people to drink plenty. Um, so Chantal has asked how she can get one of those bottles. The best thing that you could do, Chantal, is if you are available, are able to give us a ring on that telephone number, 01823331222. One of our agents will put you in touch with someone in the Wales area or drop us a message on the Talking Cafe Facebook page with your telephone number and I'll make sure someone from Wales gives you a ring and we can sort out getting one of those water bottles to you. So I'm going to move on to just finish up talking about North Sedgemoor before I move slightly back to Bridgewater. So we have um, Kirsten Rushby, as Steve mentioned, is um, our lovely agent who covers the Cheddar, Wedmore, Axbridge and surrounding villages. So Kirsten takes her referrals from the Cheddar, Wedmore and Axbridge surgeries, any, any staff member that works in one of those practices. And she also takes self-referrals. So she's given us a short case study of a sort of typical client that Kirsten would um, support. So she has said, currently, a typical client of mine will be a son or daughter of a parent that has memory problems and or some physical issues, which makes it difficult for them to mobilise. And that family want assistance to find care, mobility equipment, funding to pay for increasing costs of keeping them independent and in their own home. And in addition, there will be the more personal needs such as issues around utilities or assistance with managing changes of behaviour. So Kirsten has pointed out that she does work in quite an affluent area. So it's very important to her to ascertain quite early on in the contact whether they're entitled to adult social care support due to their savings or their pensions. Um, as that will ensure that they are given the right advice based on their circumstances. So Kirsten, um, Kirsten's told us what she feels is the best part of being a village agent. She says, I love working with people and problem solving. It always feels such an honour to be welcomed into someone's life and asked to support them through very personal and sometimes challenging periods in their life. 
In addition, the CCS Sedgemore team are fantastic and really pulled together. And I also work alongside some fantastic professionals such as GPs, OTs, adult social care employees and district nurses with a vast amount of experience and knowledge that they are willing to share. So um, the last bit that I've asked Kirsten to tell us if there is any um, updates for her area and she has just said that she has been very impressed at how well local services and volunteers have come together to support the more vulnerable members of the community during the pandemic. So that's great. Thank you, Kirsten, if you watch this on Catch Up um, for giving me that info. So that's Kirsten, Kim and Steve, our fantastic trio of PCN agents in the North Sedgemore area. I'm also going to introduce you to Mandy Fisher. Mandy might still be watching the stream, so morning, Mandy, if you are. Mandy is a part of our community agent team in Sedgemore, but she does tend to cover the sort of Burnham Highbridge area. She has an excellent local knowledge of that area. And so she, um, you know, she's kind of covering that patch at the moment. And also um, Mandy Fisher is our, is temporarily during this pandemic, covering our triage line. So if you were to make a referral through our website um, or through the telephone number, then it's likely that you'll be lucky enough to have Mandy give you a ring to discuss your issues and look at providing you with a solution. So Mandy, as I say, Mandy Fisher is a community agent in Sedgemore, mainly North. Um, she takes her referrals from adult social care teams. Uh, before we had to close the Talking Cafe, you may have met Mandy at the Burnham on Sea Talking Cafe, which runs on a Tuesday alongside Citizens Advice. Um, but you may have also met her on a Thursday morning at the YMCA in Highbridge. Uh, talking cafe so it may be that you recognize Mandy from one of those um, Mandy you know has a particular interest she's come from a housing background she's got fantastic knowledge around housing um, she's absolutely brilliant supporting clients in the local area and finding solutions for issues um, that clients are presenting with so um, I have a short case study from Mandy that I will um, just read to you so Mandy um, was working with a client earlier this year, so this was before the pandemic, um, a client with mental health and bereavement issues. Um, she, upon doing a joint visit with a mental health social worker, she you know, assessed that there were financial issues. Um, there were issues around the client not leaving the property and not answering the telephone and not opening any post because of their anxieties. Um, so... Mandy worked alongside the mental health social worker to provide some solutions and get some outcomes for this client. Um, they did things such as supporting them to open their post and deal with any posts that needed to be dealt with. Um, they supported them to open a new bank account, which allowed them to um, apply for benefits and have the benefits paid directly into that bank account. They supported them with a the DWP and any um, you know, reconsiderations that had to be done around their benefits. Um, and they also supported the client to keep in contact with their mother who was terminally ill and staying in a hospice. So they enabled him to um, have re regular telephone conversations with her, um, which obviously improved his mental health. Um, so a really great example of kind of the support that Mandy provides. She really works alongside our colleagues in adult social care to provide solutions for our clients. So I'm going to... That's kind of covered our North Sedgemore team, apart from one special agent who kind of covers all over. Lucy might still be with us this morning, so if you've got any questions for Lucy, pop them in the comments. Lucy is our lovely carers agent, and Lucy covers the whole of Sedgemore. And I know what a busy patch that is because I used to do the job myself. So I was a carers agent when I joined CCS, and I passed that role on to um, Lucy, last September, so she's nearly been with us a year. So as a carer's agent, Lucy covers the whole of Sedgemore. She supports unpaid carers with anything that they require help and support with. So she takes referrals from pretty much everywhere, GP surgeries and from our triage system, self-referrals, from hospitals, housing offices, all kinds of places. And she has told us a little bit about the typical support that she would give to an unpaid carer. So she covers a variety of different subjects when supporting clients. She can give support and advice around hospital transport, 
uh, sourcing a micro provider to provide a package of care. Uh, she can support with adult social care um, providing a package of care if the person is eligible. She supports carers to source um, some daycare or respite care options if they are needing a break from their role as an unpaid carer. Um, she has supported carers with referrals to incontinence nurses, and carers um, assessments and a huge range of things that Lucy is able to support in. The, probably the biggest thing that Lucy would tell us that she does is gives emotional support to carers. She recognises how difficult the job is and that people often don't get a break from it. And sometimes all they really need is to have a cry, have a chat about how they're feeling and what they're experiencing. And Lucy is excellent at giving that kind of emotional support. Lucy, before the pandemic again, was um, running our lovely carers groups. We had a very successful, very popular group in the Burnham area, which was always really well attended. And then Lucy launched another carers group in the Highbridge area, which was you know coming off the ground fantastically and then we were also just looking at setting up a new service in Bridgewater which was going to be a carers drop-in service so fingers crossed when we can open up our talking cafes and carers groups again they are a fantastic resource for unpaid carers to get a little bit of peer support as well as that support from Lucy with all of her knowledge so I've asked Lucy tell us what the best part of being a carers agent is and she has said, my favourite part of being a carer's agent is the way you make people feel. They're often upset, anxious, stressed, at their wits end, and any little thing I do to help takes a bit of that pressure and burden away. Some carers struggle on for months until that first call to me. We discuss what's been happening and how they're feeling and what help, support and advice I can offer them. I can't fix everything, but always do something to help alleviate that pressure and or frustration. It gives me great job satisfaction and pride as a caring human that I've helped in my own way. So I always refer to Lucy as our sunshine agent. She goes in, she brightens up people's days and makes such a big difference to the way that they are feeling as a carer. So if you are watching and you're an unpaid carer in the Sedgemore area and you think that Lucy might be able to provide you some support, please do get in touch let us know, give us a ring or drop us a, um, a message on the Talking Cafe Facebook page and I'll get Lucy to give you a ring and brighten up your day. So that really does conclude everybody that covers the kind of North Sedgemore area. And I'm gonna move on to talking to our remaining agents in the Bridgewater area. This might be a long Talking Cafe this morning. <laughs> We've got a big team. So I'm gonna introduce you now to Julie. Julie Draper is one of our PCN village agents in Bridgewater. So PCN is Primary Care Network. So she is attached to five of the GP surgeries in the Bridgewater Bay area. So she is linked to the below doctor's surgeries. She covers Victoria Park, Redgate, Somerset Bridge, Woolavington, Eddington and Cannington. So she covers a really wide patch and a really big team of um, GP and other practice staff members. So the best thing about my role, Julie says, is the feeling you get knowing that you have really helped someone, whether that's a housing solution, benefits appeal, isolation needs, or general signposting. She says, to us, it may seem minor, but to them, it's huge. And it gives such a lovely, warm, fuzzy feeling. And then Julie is um, twinned by our other PCN agent in um, Bridgewater, Rachel Hilton. So Rachel Hilton covers those other five GP areas in the Bridgewater Bay. Um, this is going to be a test of my memory because Rachel hasn't given me a, a piece of paper to read off. So she's attached to North Petherton, Taunton Road, East Quay, the Quantox Medical Centres and Cranley Gardens. So um, if you are registered at one of those GP practices and you speak to the GP about a referral into our village agents, it's likely that Rachel will be the agent for you. Um, so Rachel, again, provides very similar support to what our PCN agents um, from North Sedgemore were telling us about, um, you know, somebody might go to the GP practice with a physical ailment, but during that consultation, it comes out that they're also struggling financially. They have no food in the house. Um, Rachel is the agent who would pick that client up and would support them to overcome all of those social issues. So Julie and Rachel are our 
PCN duo in Bridgewater area. And then we also have some more community agents um, in the Bridgewater area. So we have Van de Squire who works along adult social care. Um, she is a well experienced, very knowledgeable community agent who provides fantastic solutions for people who are linked in with adult social care. So adult social care may be meeting their needs in terms of a care package, but they may pass the client on to Vanda for any social needs they might have. So it may be that the person requires a package of care, adult social care put that in, but the person also says, I would really like to attend a coffee morning or I um, actually need support in cleaning my house and sorting my garden out. Um, Vanda would go in and she would assess that social need and she would provide a community solution for that. And we also have Lisa Cudlip in the Bridgewater area. She is very similar to Jo in that her new community agent role was due to kickstart on the 31st of March and was a little bit obviously delayed by the pandemic. So Lisa is a community agent in the Sedgemoor area. She uh, specialises in mental health. So she works alongside the mental health social care team and she takes referrals at Peer Forum for people who I, again, looking for those community solutions to their social issues. Um, Lisa says, obviously, yes, yeah, so she'll attend peer forums um, and then meets with a collaborative approach to try and working together with the team to help improve the client situation. So Lisa says, I have a special interest in working with clients who face difficulties with poor mental health. And I enjoy being part of the village agent team as I find it rewarding when we have successful outcomes for the clients we are supporting and helping to improve people's lives. So that is, I believe, all of the team aside from Anne-Marie and myself, which I will just um, introduce you to us as well. But I'm just looking through the comments. I can see one from John this morning. Um, John, we don't cover the Dorset area but there may be another organisation that does that we might be able to put you in contact with. I will do some research later this afternoon and let you know if I find anything. But it sounds like you're doing a great job with your community project there. If anybody is interested in the Dorset area, perhaps drop a message to John and he can put you in touch. So that kind of includes our agent team. As I said, myself, Lauren Giddens, I am the team lead for um, Sedgemoor. I'm quite new to the role. I've only been doing it since the start of this year. Um, I've been with CCS for two years now. I joined as a carer's agent. I did a year as a carer's agent and then I moved into a short mental health project that we did before finally ending up as the team lead. I, um, I've done a degree for three years before I joined CCS in health and social care management. Um, and uh, before that, I worked in a dementia care home for many years, as well as domiciliary care and agency care as well. Um, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would come out of university and find a job that was so fitted to my individual values and beliefs um, in that I do not believe that a care service should impose a service onto people which should be responsive to their needs and giving them options and giving them solutions that they can then um, choose to improve their lives. So. I feel very lucky to work for CCS. I see it as a complete honour. Every interaction I have with a client and every difference that we make to them is just amazing, out of this world, fantastic. I'm very lucky to have a great team behind me and alongside me. Um, and we, you know, we are providing solutions for people every single day. I have recently introduced a deputy team lead into our team in Sedgemoor, because as I mentioned, we are a big team and it's um, very difficult to manage the, you know, the needs of the team without two of us. So Anne-Marie has kindly come on board as a deputy team lead. You may know Anne-Marie if you are in the Bridgewater area as she has been with CCS maybe three years now. Um, she ran the Talking Cafe in Bridgewater. She got that up and running. She worked as a PCN agent for a long time um, within the Bridgewater Bay surgery. So you may have met her through your GP practice. And she also was the team lead for the mental health project that we ran. So Anne-Marie has her finger in so many pies that I'm sure you will have come across her somewhere. 
Um, Anne-Marie is also kind of leading up the project around our food resilience projects in, in Somerset at the moment. So she is at the warehouse today um, dishing out food from our warehouse to community groups to enable them to feed their communities, um, you know, whether that be families or individuals, those community groups would take the food that we donate to them and they would then make meals with it to serve their community. So Anne-Marie will be um, knee deep in tomato soup and beans and flour and tea and coffee and all those wonderful things at the warehouse that will be going out to community groups today. So that is Sedgemore. I think, I really hope that one of you will nudge me if I've forgotten someone because I do have an awful habit of forgetting 12 people <laughs> sometimes. Uh, Steve's looking, he's thinking, I'm sure I've covered everybody. Yeah, because thumbs up, I'm sure I have too. <laughs> Steve and Kim, is there anything you want to say before I finish the live? No? Steve, is there anything you want to say? I can't read that, so I'm going to add you in. You ready? Uh, Steve? Have you, have you mentioned, did I miss Lisa? I mentioned Lisa, yes, I was talking you, about... Oh, sorry, apologies. That's okay. <laughs> it is quite easy to forget somebody in a group of 12, um, but I think I've covered everybody. I Fingers think you have them, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Steve, for joining us this morning. So if nobody's got any questions, I will finish the live there. It's been a long one this morning, and I will probably lose my voice. <laughs> so it's a good time to wrap up and say goodbye from Sedgemoor. I won't be with you next week as I'm on annual leave. We have um, birthdays in the family. Uh, my son will be turning six and I will be turning 29. <laughs> Not quite 30 next year. So um, yeah, so I'm on leave. I will catch you the week after and uh, look forward to it. Take care, everybody. See you again soon. Bye-bye.